when I, when I came over, I was like, okay, so are you guys your own witness? Because this is something they would do as well. Uh, no, they wouldn't street preach. That's, that's they they would stand on a corner with their with the little bookshelf. Yes, yeah, they would do that. But they they wouldn't. Yeah, because we went down to Super Bowl and we saw them on every corner. But they won't they won't open their mouth to preach. They won't do it. They're out there trying to get a little ticker on their belt. I did my time. I earned my little spot in heaven because I did my time. I did my work. We're not out here to do that. I'm already saved. If I don't come out here. For the rest of my life, I'm still saved because saved. Jesus Christ, since 1999, okay. I got saved in 99. I don't know the exact time and hour and everything, I think, I but I got saved know. behind a TV screen. Uh, I, I heard a gospel priest and I, I bowed the knee at, behind a TV screen. Well, I, I think with religion itself, and with like Christianity and Baptism, you know, Baptism uh, and Catholicism, is that if the message reaches you, that's, that's the benefit of it. Because when well, I was 16, I was baptized at this church because um, I, as I was born, I'm very Catholic. It's not that I didn't like being a Catholic, it's just that I liked the message that I was receiving from you know, the Baptist. Sure. With Catholicism, my biggest issue with Catholicism is the ritualistic ways of it. It's always the same thing over and over again every time of the year. And you don't really learn more about the book in that way. So. Right. I, yeah, just, I understand. But my question to you is, how does this for you, like, how does this help everybody else coming out here shouting, you know, about Jesus? When most people know about, you know, Jesus Christ, God, and stuff like that, you know, already. So that, that's why I'm trying to, okay. that's the question I'm trying to get to is like, what what made you come out here and say, hey, I think this is a great idea to okay. promote it out? How does this not reflect the. No, it's a good question. Doing it. Sure. That, that's, my, that's my only question. Sure, it's a good question. It's like yeah. when, I, when I came around the corner and it was, uh, I, I have an issue with you know, people that do this stuff because it's like, I didn't, I never want anything shut down. So I'm a salesman. So sure. me being a salesman, I don't like the door knock. I'm a realtor and I have to door knock. I like to bother people because everybody lives their own way of life and, they, and you know, as long as we all get together, we all, you know, will reach, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, and then to our needs, like we'll all reach at one point at the same time. That, that's how I feel. I feel like we'll all, we'll all reach the same path at the end. So, so I, I would say, does my worldview is Bible believing Christian? I told you that earlier. Right, right. That's my worldview. So, in my worldview, the Bible is the final authority. So, the Bible trumps your opinion and my opinion in my worldview. And your worldview, I don't know your worldview, you haven't really expressed a whole lot. You said you were, you, I think you're still Catholic, maybe? No, I, I'm both. I'm like, to me, it's both because I was raised okay. Catholic. Baptist. So I don't know your final, but, but I, don't, I don't know your final authority, so I couldn't say, I couldn't speak for you. Jesus Christ is my, is my savior. So, he's, he's but could, could we both come into an agreement based upon our own volition and free will that if we claim to be Christian, that the word of God would be the final authority? I think. Now, now, see, that's where we're going to be so different. Here's, here's, here's what I think is the final authority. The, the final authority to me is when I die, and after what I have done on this, you know, on this planet in the small amount of time that I'm here on this world, and the impact that I've left on people, I will be judged by that. I'll be judged whether it was good or bad, you know, depending on the person that I was, that when I get up there and God says, you know what, you know, I accepted you as my, my you know, one of my children, and thank you for, you know, Accepting me as your God, you know, accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Um, or, I could, or I could have been a terrible person. It's like, look, you raped somebody, you did this, you're going to hell. I mean, good luck there because you you didn't listen to, you know, the, the Word of God. I mean, okay, yes, okay, real. Yes, there are some okay. In, in the book, you know, I've read the Old Testament over and over again. I've read the New Testament. I probably read the Old Testament more than the New Testament because the amount of times that the New Testament has been preached out, no one ever goes back to the Old Testament because the same excuse that I got with the Old Testament was, well, it doesn't matter anymore because the New Testament's the word, the Old Testament is just the history. You know, you're supposed to learn from the history of what you know happened in life sure. versus you know the New Testament. Sure. My, my grandmother, bless her heart, 89 years old, has dementia. And the one thing that she could remember in her life is every Bible verse. And she is so, and she's so sweet, but now she can't hold a conversation more than a minute. She'll ask me the same question. She still, still thinks I'm in high school. So it's like, with she has that much faith, and you know, she is a Catholic, and she has so much faith in God, and so much faith so, in Jesus Christ and love. So according to the question that was asked, yeah. 
your final authority would be after you're dead. So you have no final authority in life. So you have no guidelines to live by My in life. My guidelines are in that book. My guidelines no, no, are... No, 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 no. When we talk about guidelines, are we talking about a final authority? Right. My final authority is when I will be judged at the end. That's in the right. end, by, by the final authority, yeah. which is the guideline, right? Yeah. The Bible. Oh, yeah. So that, that's basically what I'm saying. Yeah. So my guideline as a Christian would be the Bible, and it would be my final authority, my plumb line in the truth and how God wants me to live. Now, obviously, we have to rightly divide because I, I'm not going to, you know, sacrifice a bunch of rams and goats if I commit, a, you know, if I commit a sin, and I don't need to go down to the temple to sacrifice goats and lambs and cattle if I commit a certain sin right. for the nation of yeah. America. It's, it was only for the nation of Israel that did it, but we learn, and like you said earlier, we glean from what Israel did, and we apply practically to the church, uh, the ones that are saved, we apply the teachings and the moralities from that to the New Testament. And even Paul did that, and Peter did that in the New Testament, as well as Jesus Christ did that in the yeah. New Testament. He went to the Old Testament, showed us something practical that we need, to, we need to do according to morality in the New Testament. He did a lot of that. So I'm, I'm with you on that, but I'm, I'm kind of struggling with if Jesus Christ came to earth and he says, I didn't come to call the righteous, but I came to call sinners to repentance, which means, I mean, if you look at the statement Jesus said, there are none righteous, none of us. Uh, Romans 3.10 says, there's none righteous, no, not one. So therefore, Jesus, is a, he couldn't call the righteous because there aren't any. The only righteous one that ever existed was Jesus himself, which means that no matter what kind of a good life you and I claim to live, we'd have to devote our boasting in Christ on every level, on every front of our lives, which means there isn't a, there isn't a, a, a series of not sinning that you can do to merit or maintain your eternal life which means it's all on Jesus Christ. He died completely for every sin you've ever committed, past, present, and future. So, why am I out here? Because Jesus already died for all the sins I've committed, past, present, and future. And I want somebody else to have the same thing. Now, we're also out here, not only to, say, to, to see as mailmen, because I'm just a mailman, I can't save anybody. God says, you preach the gospel, they decide if they want to trust that gospel or not. But we are out here to offer, as a mailman puts a mail in a mailbox. You don't got to open that mail. You can throw it in the trash. A lot of people do. They'll throw a check in the trash that has probably a, a million dollars they want a sweepstakes. Throw it in the trash. It's just a bill. Throw it in the trash. I don't like bills. And without even opening the letter, and the Bible says, he that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is a folly to him. So if you're, if you're already answering me, be, answering me before I even tell you what the mail is all about, it's a folly, just like throwing away that letter. So we're out here to offer the free gift of eternal life, not work all these good deeds, go to church, be faithful here, like a, like a Jehovah Witness or a Mormon or even a Catholic. Take partake of the sacraments, partake of the mass, and you'll maintain your salvation. You got to get rid of those venial sins and those mortal sins, or you're going to do this purgatory. No, we're not doing that. We're talking about the Bible saying Jesus Christ completely paid it all. His blood was sufficient enough to pay for every sin you've ever committed that I've committed. And we're out here to bring, it's good news. It would be bad news if you had to earn it. If you had to maintain a certain standard of code of conduct, it would be bad news. Because then any of us would be fearful at nighttime saying, did I do enough works to maintain my salvation? That's what the Jehovah Witness got to go to bed in thinking. Well, did I, did I stand on the corner long enough with my little bookshelf to offer enough books to merit eternal life? They've got to they ask those questions. We don't. We're already saved. We believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again a third day. He died on that cross. And notice in the Catholic Church, he's still on the cross. Why is Jesus still on the cross? I'll tell you why. Because every day, every week you go to Mass, you've got to go with, you've, you've got to merit it with Jesus eternal life. You've got to partake of that Mass. You've got to eat Jesus and you've got to partake of that blood. If you don't, you're not maintaining your salvation. You can lose it. See, Jesus never told us to do that. The Lord's Supper is something that he did in remembrance of what he was going to do on the cross at the time when he did it for the apostles. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So he didn't say do this to maintain your salvation. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Remember what I did. Look to me because I loved you enough to die for you. Die for every sin. 
Just look to me and remember what I did for you and have a relationship with me. So we're out here to preach relationship, not religion. And so that's what we're all about. We love that, that lady over there. We want her to be saved. You know, we preached her many times. She's been out here for a few years now. But I've talked to her. I've tried to witness to her. She just, I guess I was just getting on her nerves. She didn't like to hear me. And so she just, she gave me the hand, like, get out of my face. She never wanted to talk to me again. But I tried my hardest to, uh, we pray for her at our church. So it's not the fact we're hateful out here. Um, I, I understand there's street preachers that come out. You can go on YouTube and all these other places and you can see street preachers out there. They're telling you, oh, you got a beer in your hand. You're going to hell. Oh, you're wearing that. You're going to hell. We're not preaching that. H how is a lost person going to be able to live Christian conduct if they're not a Christian yet? So the message is wrong with those street preachers. Our street preaching message is in which Isaiah street preached, Ezekiel street preached, Jesus preached Sermon on the Mount, Paul preached Mars Hill. <laughs> Groups of people went publicly and from house to house, Acts chapter 20. That's what the apostles did. And when a city didn't want them, they wiped the dust off their feet. So what we're doing is scriptural. We're doing it not only to win people to Jesus Christ, but we're also doing it because we're being obedient to the Lord. The Lord told us to do this. So whether they, hear, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, you preach to these people. The nation of Israel was disobedient. They did not want God. And so Isaiah was to preach to them. Ezekiel was to preach to them, even though God knew they didn't want to hear it. And Isaiah and Ezekiel knew they didn't want to hear it. Jeremiah. They didn't want to hear Jeremiah and he preached to the whole city. So what we're saying is what we're doing is scriptural. What we're doing is what God wants us to do. Yeah, there's internet out there and I got my own, I got my own YouTube channel, but I'm not out here to preach YouTube channels and, subs and subscriptions. I'm out here to preach the gospel so somebody out here could, could get saved. And uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, a guy did come up to me as I was street preaching and, and he stood right there by that, by that fire hydrant. And he said, he said, hey, um, I appreciate what you guys are doing out here. I agree with what you said. And I asked him if he was saved and he said, yeah. And he, he said he went to that, uh, a church up there somewhere. I think, I don't know if it was the sanctuary or another church. I can't remember the name of it, but it was a church locally here. He, he was a local. And I told him, I said, um, are you saved though? He says, yeah, I go to church. I said, no, I didn't ask that. Are you saved? He says, well, 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 what do you mean? And so I explained to him, have you believed and trusted that Jesus died for your sins and rose again the third day? I said, I can show you in here that that's how you get saved. Uh, Romans 10, 9, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. You can read it and they'll tell you how to get saved. You don't need me. You can go to the Bible, but a lot of people, they won't open this book. Oh, it's too big. I don't want to read it. Because I say, if you read the Bible, you'll know exclusively it's in Jesus Christ's death, burial and resurrection. That's what the Acts of the Apostles is all about. It's about going from city to city as missionaries, preaching the gospel to every creature. That Jesus died for their sins and rose again. Nothing more, nothing less. That's it. That's how you get saved. Now, after you get saved, certainly there's, there's a work that needs to be done. You need to live your life for Jesus, but it doesn't save you whether you do or not. But it would be the normal thing. It would be the common sense thing to do. If you knew Jesus saved you from your sins, the least you could do, Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So our reasonable service, knowing that Jesus paid it all, is to live our lives for him as a sacrifice to him. Not to kill ourselves, but to live for him. It's harder to live for somebody than to die for him. A lot of people say, oh, I'll die for Jesus. Nah, let's see you live for him. That's a lot harder to do. But whether you live for him or not, you're still saved if you trusted in him and believed on him. That's the good news of the gospel message. A lot of people get saved and don't live their lives for Jesus. And what these street preachers do, these lordship guys, these repentance guys, they'll come out there and they'll see a beer in your hand. And you may even tell them, they'll say, well, you got a beer in your hand, you're going to hell. Well, what? And he'll say, well, uh, you've got to be righteous. And it'll give you verses out of, out of the book of Matthew about being righteous for he is righteous. And, and it'll give you verses like that. And so they'll pull verses out of context. And basically all they're doing is preaching to the world on a street corner that you have to have this code of conduct to live, this Christian code of conduct to live by in order to be saved or maintain your salvation. And that's a devil's lie. 
That's another gospel in Galatians 1, 6. If you preach anything other than that Jesus died for your sins and rose again a third day, you are preaching another gospel. And people are going to be trusting in that and they're going to be trying to maintain some salvation that they know they can't keep. Come on, I mean, think about this. If you have to keep a code of conduct, how much, who decides what code of conduct to keep? How far are the limits to go? You see what I'm saying? Where is the line drawn? Okay, can you lie? No, you can't lie. All liars will have their part in the lake of fire, Revelation 20, or Re yeah, Revelation 20 and 21, 21, eight. So if you can't lie, well, can you think about lying? Well, that's called an iniquity. That's a sin within that you didn't physically transgress. Well, can I think about lying? No, you can't. Because if you, if you think about it, you're going to hell. Well, none of us could keep that code of conduct then because nobody is more righteous than Jesus Christ. That's why Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the glory of God is Jesus' righteousness. We all come short of that. If I stand next to Jesus, I know I come short. I could never measure up. Even after I'm saved, I can't measure up. That's why every day I give him the glory for, sal for the salvation of my soul. Not, not what I do every day in my life. Not standing out here on a corner. Look, this isn't doing anything to secure my, my heavenly security, okay? Jesus has paid it all. And so that's what we're out here preaching, but it's hard. It's hard to preach that because people right away, they assume or line us up with all these other preachers that are preaching all this hate and, oh, you're a homosexual, you're going to hell. You know what we preach? You're a homosexual, you can be saved. Jesus Christ is willing to forgive you. You see, you're a murderer today? Jesus Christ is willing to forgive you. See, there isn't, there's not a sin in the world that you can commit that Jesus Christ cannot forgive. As a lost person, as a lost person, you can get saved no matter what condition you're in. So I always tell people, do you clean a fish before you catch it or after you catch it? I, I to a point, I actually disagree on the last part, but most of what you have to say is like my thoughts that I think about. Like well, time, when I came over here, because I didn't have much of a time to listen to what you were saying, because I had to talk to them as well. Sure, sure. Was, I didn't get to hear what you were preaching out. If you aren't preaching out hateful messages, then I don't have a that's the question because she's quiet the entire time. And if you're not preaching hate, and you're not yelling at her for this, or you're not. I'm, at her, I'm facing this direction that's too. Perf that's perfectly fine to me, but. Um, <laughs> but people are still going to perceive that oh, yeah, right no, there. I, I, I can't. When I, when I can't I avoid that. Here, these cars were coming this way, and because these cars were coming this way, I didn't see them. I didn't see them over there or there. Sure. Just like, sure. Why, why you guys share that? And then I saw across it. Ah, uh, okay. Then that's fine. You know, like if it's one one against the other, it's cool with me. Uh, yeah, I, I would like her saved. I mean, I don't want contention out here, but she decided. We, uh, Our church has been coming out here since 1985. She's only just recently started coming out here it, within a year, year and a half, maybe two years. She's been coming out here faithfully every Friday. But if we leave this corner, her, her signs don't make any sense. So who's hating on who? I don't have anything about atheism on my, on my sign oh, yeah, there. It's all about, we're pointing people to Jesus. We're not even talking about hell. We're pointing people to Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. I, and just take, I was just taking a look at your shirt while you're talking. I was like, the sign over there, okay. We believe in hell. We believe people will go there. I just don't believe telling people they're going to hell is gonna accomplish anything. People are gonna get negative. They're gonna hate us for it. So we offer Jesus. But if anybody asks us about our belief in hell, we'll tell them objectively, according to the word of God, what hell is. It's a real place. It's not an analogy. A place where real people go. We don't want you to go there. But we will preach hell objectively according to the word of God. We won't preach it because, okay, you're doing that. Well, you're going to hell. How are you going to win people to Jesus that way? You're not. So if, if, you, had to main, if you had to do some work to maintain your salvation, I, the, the only question I would ask is then why did Jesus come? If, if, if your limit to salvation is, well, you can't be a homosexual, then why did Jesus come? Did Jesus say, I, I came to die for sins of the world except for homosexuality? See, that's a question that you would have to answer if you don't agree that homosexuals can't get saved. Because I'm telling you, read Lot in, read Lot in the Bible. He, he lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. And in 2 Peter, it says his righteous soul was vexed. He was affected by all that stuff, but Lot was saved. Lot was saved. He did a lot of wicked things. He even gave his daughters to the Sodomites so they could rape them. He's still a saved man. See, and, and these are things that 
uh, if the Bible's not your final authority, you don't have to struggle with those things. But then I would question if you're a Christian, because Jesus even believed the very words of God. Jesus quoted the Old Testament. Jesus says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth out of his own mouth. He said the Old Testament is truth. So if you say the Bible isn't true in certain areas, then where, where does that leave Jesus? He's supposed to be our final authority. That leaves Jesus as a liar or Jesus as not trustworthy. So I say, you either got to believe this whole book or believe none of it. You got to believe it all or, it's, or, or God's a liar. Because he said every word of God is pure in Proverbs 30, verse 5. 2 Timothy 3, 16, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You either believe it all or you believe nothing. You can't say, I, well, I don't believe that part. Well, that's a parable. And this over here, that's, that's okay because it agrees with what I, what I want to believe. No, you got to believe it all. Whether it's convenient or not, you got to believe it all. So to me, that's where we stand as Christians. But as far as having a loving message out here, what more love could you have than the greatest love story ever told that Jesus died for you because he loves you? He wants to give you everlasting life, forgiveness of sins, and reconciliation so you could have a right relationship with him. What more love could you get than that? It's free. There's, you don't got to pay for it. You don't got to earn it. There's not enough... There's not enough church going that you can do to, to get it. You just, uh, look, a person out there in the middle of, of Brazil, in the middle of the jungle could say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died for my sins, rose again a third day. I believe that and I trust that. And he could be saved from his sins, not knowing how to live his life for Jesus because he never got a Bible. He could be saved. He'd probably still be living in his old heathen ways, but he's still a saved man if he trusted the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So see, that's... That's the power of the gospel. And that's the power that we're trying to share out here. But I think the land's heard the gospel, you know, many times over. Maybe not everybody. You can't assume. It's, it's hard to assume. You can't assume people saved or lost either. I set the table down. Okay. Was earlier. I was giving another five minutes. And I was like, my turn. Well, what's your name? What's your name? Marcus Edward. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. A good talking to you. Thank you for being objective, coming to talk to see I our like, side. I like keeping open. All right. You have a good one now. Take care.